uh, 656. Um, public comment? No public comment. Um, is there a consent agenda? Uh, do a motion to approve the consent agenda, and I think <coughs> someone may want to make a motion with an amendment to remove something for discussion. Could we move this, remove the superintendent's expectations from that agenda? Yes, but I need a motion to do that. Oh, I would we like just to need to move to approve the consent agenda yeah. without it in there, right? Yes, exactly. Including the addition that we're just provided, like to right? Yeah. to approve the consent agenda without the superintendent expectations. And adding yeah. the, Oh, and, and adding, adding the uh, hiring to the resignation. Hiring is in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that motion. I have a second. Second. Is that um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Good. And Tina, you wanted to talk about the superintendent's report? I did. In this um, monitoring report, on, on the beginning of it, it says interpretation, treatment of the communication with parents, guardians, citizens. Under that it says communication is equitable and respectful from both the superintendent and the district staff. And I noticed when I read this, um, there's a wonderful list of things that as a district we do all together. And so I'm wondering what evidence Libby might have of things she does as a superintendent. I mean as a personally so people communicating to you one on one kind of mm -hmm. communication. So Tina asked me this earlier, so I have a bullet of this. Um, so I have, um, I respond to emails from parents within 24 hours, um, as, and phone calls as well, if I'm in the office. Unfortunately, a lot of times I get phone calls and they leave messages and I'm not in the office. However, I look at the addition of Anna, that has helped considerably because most of my phone calls now go to her rather than coming to my office, which was a change this year. We made, so she can tell people if I'm out of the office or not. Um, my emails are public record, so everybody's more than welcome to pull them up to make sure that they're respectful in my tone. Um, and then all with parent phone calls, whenever I talk to a parent, I have a parent log that I keep in a confidential location. So um, they're my notes from every phone call I get from a parent. Um, and while that's covered by FERPA, certainly I can make a log of that if, you, if you're interested in, in that. Um, but I take notes so I know if it's a parent is repeating a phone call that I have a long, I, I know that, right? It's all drafted out together and to make sure that I can keep track of themes and synthesize that if I need to. Um, and then if you look on my my Twitter feed, it's open to the public and it's pretty positive. If you don't follow me yet, do so. <laughs> no, Bridget and Jim do. <laughs> yeah, I'm about pumpkins today. <laughs> yes. I follow you too and I'm still waiting for that follow back, just saying. I do <laughs> follow you. <laughs> I do follow you on Twitter. He's too busy working to follow you. <laughs> so all of that is open to the public, and um, I am consistent in my positivity of what sharing with the great things that the district is doing. Um, I've gotten some some parents writing to me through Twitter now, which is a new thing this year. It didn't happen last year. Um, and through our MRPS websites, or Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts, thanks to Anna. She's, she's taking charge of that. So... Is that good? Are you looking for other things to you? No. Okay. Because it was sort of missing. This is true. I but I have one more question. Sure. Under your evidence for interpretation of employment, compensation, and treatment of the staff you have, the superintendent has put in place an evaluation system for administrators that will drive compensation off. Could you explain that? Um, so using when, like, we're up for the, the administrators will be negotiating, I'm sure, their salaries this year. Um, with myself and Jim, I would assume, being that it's the first year that's happened. Because last year they had a con they were under two-year contracts, so there was no negotiation. It was listed in the contract. Um, so I'll be using the evaluation system that I have in place for them to, to drive that conversation. That's what that means. Drive a conversation around. If they're coming in, yes individually. If they're coming in asking for a big raise, then we can look to see what the evaluation results and, and what what kind of things we've been talking about for their own continuous improvement and how what evidence they've gathered around that. Thank you. You're welcome. 
And by the way, I'd like to correct the record. You do follow me on Twitter, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we've moved on or anything. <laughs> Um, if there are no other questions, I'll make a motion to, to approve, approve the uh, superintendent's expectation monitoring report. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Um, so, if you the agenda. Um, board business. The, uh, and I think this is the Andrews show. Um, MSMS Building Board Committee. And Andrew, you can. Okay. Yeah, and I okay. don't know if you want to just hang out back there. Or, I'll, I'll, well, I'll yeah. let it move it. There's okay. a very fancy right. chair right here. Yeah, um, just, just so cameras right. so you can <laughs> Sounds good. Um, be part of the home show. So, first of all, a quick anecdote. About a month ago, um, I finished a mountain bike ride at my wife's school in Stowe and ran into the middle school principal. Did you and he was talking it? about what? <laughs> and he was talking about he was talking about the, the state of their building, and I mentioned that we have this middle school building committee that we're just getting off the ground. And he said, "Oh, we did something very similar to that." And I said, "Oh yeah, can you tell me about the process? Who was involved?" And he's like. We had this great guy from Black River Design <laughs> <laughs> named Andrew LaRosa who really helped uh, lead the process. That's a and I want to go back to the compensation. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, no, I'm serious. He, he seriously said this, and I, I was like, well, we're fortunate because Andrew's with, with our district now. So um, just wanted to put that out there. Um, so. We met, Libby, Andrew, and I, and we had preliminary meetings to talk about the general trajectory of this building committee, and we toured the school. Um, a brief update on that, I think, just so that you all are aware, we have Tina's the other board member who this board appointed, and um, Andrew's going to be the vice chair of this. We have Jack McCullough from City Council who's on it. Pam Arnold's the principal member. Then we have Dan Richardson and Jay Erickson, parent members. Thank you for stepping up on that. We have Eli Rosenberg, who is the MSMS teacher representative. And then we have Sylvia Zitduiz, or how do I pronounce Sylvia's last name? Does anybody know? Okay, but we will find out at our first meeting, but she's, she's very excited to join the committee. So that's. The committee, um, in terms of the trajectory, we had talked in our charge, we had talked about wrapping this up by the end of this fiscal year. And after talking with Andrew, um, since he's been involved in these processes before, and after the three of us looked at what the schedule would look like, we think we're going to need um, until probably November 2020, so a full year. Our first meeting is going to be at the end of October. October 28th is the first meeting of this committee. And so one thing that we're going to be asking for is a revision of the charge because the board approved the charge that we would have this work done by the end of the fiscal year. So that's one thing that we wanted to bring to you. Do you want to talk about the process at all, Andrew, in terms of what um, looking at right now? The, the, when we, we sat down and looked at the schedule, and just when you start taking into consideration, you know, the summer is pretty well lost. And the holidays, November is pretty dicey to get people to, you know, to get work done. So by the time we take time to get ourselves organized, to understand uh, the program of what, where we want to head, how to overlay that on existing conditions, how to explore other options, and then you throw into there a couple of public forums, um, the time just uh, brought us to November and, yeah. and, it, and it wasn't and that's actually a pretty aggressive schedule because we're, we're not I don't think that we're really looking to come to you to say this is the solution and this is how much it's going to cost it's sort of these are the options and these are the magnitudes and these are the relative pieces such that the conversation can have a good uh, you know solid footings for further conversations um, and we've got a tentative schedule that I think uh, probably after our first meeting one of the things we'll do is is probably review that with the group, and then we can get that back to you, can, so you can actually see the sort of progression of, of where we're looking ahead. Yeah, we're going to include um, two to three public engagement um, and input sessions throughout the course of this. We'll 
will probably present on on the work that's been done, but we really do want to get a lot of community input on this. And we have heard from a number of community members in the immediate proximity. Most of those um, community members are particularly concerned about the new busing situation. Um, and I, I just think it's noteworthy that the two parent members that we do have on this committee, they might not be on the same street as all of the community members that we've heard from. Not that I'm certain of the exact, that all of those community members are on the same street, but these two community members, these two parent members, do live in the immediate proximity of the, mi the middle school. So, um, in terms of representation for that immediate proximity, I think, uh, I think that, that community is represented. Um, so the, the, other than extending the deadline, which it, we're going to ask him, you know, we can extend it to November 2020. I think we'll be done by November 2020. We might want to just say by the end of 2020, um, in case something yeah, like that we're some wiggle room. Yeah. I mean. So I, I was going to propose that as one change. The other thing that we really feel like we needed to talk with the board about, and I've already talked with Jim about this to an extent, is the the charge, the first charge of, of the committee is to evaluate options and opportunities for an MS, MS building and property arrangement that meets the educational goals of Montpelier Roxbury, Roxbury Public Schools. And it says this evaluation will include consideration of the advantages and disadvantages of the current MSMS building structure and property changes and improvements at that location and relocation opportunities. The key, the thing that we were getting hung up on is if we're going to evaluate options and opportunities that meet the educational goals of Montpelier Roxbury Public Schools, we we need um, we wanted to come to the board for for guidance on those educational goals because we don't have those educational goals you know there are, there are goals throughout our policies and we have a vision statement but we don't have educational goals clearly laid out and so we were thinking that um, we we had a little bit of a discussion I know Andrew and I are at least thinking that. Um, Defining those educational goals is quite outside of the scope of this Main Street Middle School Building Committee, and so we wanted to come to the board to talk with you about. I'm not certain that those exact goals will be ironed out if we were to do some larger visioning with the community. I'm not certain that those will be ironed out in the next couple of months for us to rely on them, so we want to have a discussion with you about what to rely on the criteria. Yeah. Uh, this is, well, this brings up the question that we really haven't reestablished ends or clear goals. Um, Nor do we have a three or a five year plan. No, no we do not have a three no, or a five year plan. Three and five years. Just like the Chinese Communist Party? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You'd never hear said in a popular box report. We've had a few of those this year. Um, so, the five year so, plan. <laughs> is it possible that the language there was maybe just not advisedly chosen? That it's suggesting that this building committee needs to maybe take on more than it really needs to take on. I mean, well, it, it could it could the charge really just the point of the charge really just be in the administration? We may not have the, the district may not have something called goals, but I mean the administration has. Yeah. Plan and has you know has lots I mean, of lots of things sure. in place for how it's conducting and the point is does the building meet the needs that the district yeah has I was I wonder if you could change goals to educational needs I mean I do think there is a conversation we need to have about whether you want to set some what, district goals or ends yeah. what what this but is going to I'm not sure that sorry. you're right this committee is not the place to do right it. nor do I think does the, the committee needs to get tripped up on that. So there's probably there's probably two questions at hand here. One is, and and we might want to table this for another meeting, is about the the larger you know establishing ends, establishing goals, establishing three to five year plans, which you know I personally think makes a lot of sense um, for our district. Um, but then there's this other issue which you're touching upon right here, which is what what do we do as a building committee? And if you are saying you know leave it to the administration, leave it to the committee. You know that will right. and not necessarily the administration mm -hmm. because the source of what the educational needs and objectives are currently right so long as you're comfortable as a board saying administration you define what our educational goals
goals are for this, and then the committee will base our work off of that. I just particularly for middle school children. Mm -hmm. And for, for and, and we're fortunate in that we're we're not trying to put too fine a point on this. You know, we want to do good work that's very useful. And we it sounds like what we're talking about is we take our best between Liddy and, and the administration and that we say this is what we envision the program to be. We clearly explain what that is. And then, if that needs to be tweaked, that you no, know, we need we want a more vibrant arts program, we want a more vibrant STEM program, we want to do whatever, that can be laid on top of it, you know, because we're going to be doing relative comparisons. And so, if the parameters we're using call for an addition of X amount of square feet, if we change those parameters, that just means we change the square footage in any option that we look at. So I don't think it's a stumbling block so much as as just what do we use and if, if we use Pam and Libby's input and, and you know we kind of say this is what we're going to use and that's good enough but at least it, it, we can use that as a starting point and tweak it from there. An example from the past is um, are you going to have classrooms working together in preference to separate? Do you want walls that move or do you want classes together? You know we went through the phase of we wanted walls in between, and that would be helpful. And that, and Do we again, want a maker space, or you know, those as opposed to a family consumer science, right? You right. know, are there is the administration that are looking out five years, looking at things like that? I think where we got caught up when Andrew, 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 Andrew and I were talking about it is that yes, we have like the the current needs plans for the next three years out, right? That are very academically focused and, and what we need to do. Um, however, those aren't the same as ends, right? If you're in policy governance, so so, yeah. so what we and I don't, this probably isn't the right time. So it's all dependent on if you get another person sitting in my seat, then who has a different vision for Montpelier Roxbury Schools, that person's going to take them there, right? Without ends, you know. So your ends are going to drive what the community believes should be the larger outcomes and anybody who's sitting in my seat needs to provide evidence to you all that we're working to reach those. Are um, you saying we do have a three-year plan? We have our continuous improvement plans that are, that are yeah, that are on that tra trajectory. Um, I use the example of like superintendents across the state are, we're all different folk, right? So I can look at one of my colleagues who's really into um, personalization and global learning through technology. Um, and so he puts a lot of emphasis on technology in their schools and, and that piece connecting to the global world through and very little on an MTSS system, whereas I put a lot of onus on an MTSS system and very little on devices. It's not my priority to make sure, you know, to get the highest, best technology devices into my kids' hands. But we're, we're counting on you. You're ours now, so we assume I know, but if I win the Powerball tomorrow... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, since I wasn't here during the charge, I, I want to be careful, but the, the two things, I, is 20 years is referenced in this? No. I thought I saw something about, you know, where are we going for the next 20, anyway. But the thing that obviously parents are going to first raise is what about the merger? With, with, you know, that's the one I hear on the street all the time is what, what happens to this building when we merge with Washington Central? And, you know, and I mean, that's not a, that's not a, idle conversation. No, I'm, I'm laughing because I hear it too. <laughs> yeah. And so that, so that kind of throws the old monkey wrench in everything. And I think it's built into this, but, um, you know, you're looking at almost like a binary situation there. And I, I don't know, um, do you plan for two eventualities? Do you plan, like what's the, I mean, how do you I, do that? I think that has to be part of this charge, part of this overall conversation. I was thinking I have to step back and say that's that's been on the table since the 70s, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it hasn't happened. You know, yes, but now right. we have movement. Do we? I think I, I think there are some people who would say the movement has been backwards. Okay. Fair um, so ignore it. I don't think ignore this it. Conversation. But I I I don't I think I think I don't think we're going to ignore it. For this yeah. Yeah. I don't think yeah. consider it in this conversation. But I also think that. Um, 
using that as a stopgap to not invest in. No, right. Of course. Yeah, I exactly. I think it has to be part of the conversation. You know, if, if there are indications that, um, you know, that a merger may be possible, um, like real indications, not, boy, isn't this a great idea? You know, there's a couple of people in Middlesex who like it. Like, you know. Um, yeah, I, I think that's that's part of it. I, mean, I think there's there's broader considerations too, and that's why some community members. Um, yeah, I mean, for instance, as a community, we're you know, depending on how the lawsuit goes, but we're investing ten million dollars in bringing people downtown with, with a, a garage and a hotel center. Um, right now, we have an open high school. There are high school students you know, who go to lunch daily there. There's you know, hundred employees who use the town, we have events that bring people to the town and the high school. Yeah, if, if, if we want to spend $10 million to bring people in with a parking garage, do we want to take all that activity and shove it out to U32 and bring in a middle school crowd if we have a very different use of the town town? I'm just sensitive so, to the first public hearing. That's yeah, I, 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 it's, it's, it's going to come up. It's derail the whole process. Well, no, I, it's not, I think I we have to think derail. about it so it doesn't process. derail the whole process. Yeah, and, and this is something that, you know, I've talked, I've, we, we talked about this when this this first came up, and when when this was first mentioned, the the comments on Facebook that I heard from parents were many of them were focused on this issue. The issue of whether to merge or not obviously is um, outside of just Montpelier because there's a lot of yeah. other communities involved, and it's the scope of that a, a merger study would be much more involved than the future yeah. of Main Street Middle School. So I think. In the process of this, we have to look at, you know, would we even have the space to take all of our middle school students and all of you 32 students and put them into an existing building, or would we need to build roughly a new building? And what would the cost of that be, kind of thing? But we're not going to be able to answer um, all of the questions with regard to a merger as part of the Main Street Middle School yeah. Building Committee. You know what I mean? I do, and, but one not one dollar on this school until we resolve that problem is one of the things that will be thrown out. Hmm. I, I, I think we have to say, you know, this problem has not been resolved since the 70s. And yeah, I mean, do you resolve it by saying, I mean, it's resolved in one of, it's one of three ways. Either it becomes this hypothetical that stops progress from happening. You say yes, which there's not a lot of indications given what happened with the merger at U32 that yes is a, a near term thing. It's the, there's a lot of scarring in those communities. and. Um, they need some time to heal and figure things out. Or you say no, never, which who, who can really ever say no, never? So, um, or you say, yeah, it's a theoretical possibility, not now, but in the meantime, we have to make investments and given how slow this process has been, we'll probably get most of that investment paid back before things are resolved. Or do. So, two points. One is the question of merging districts is a totally different question of buildings and yes. merging buildings and merging schools. Mm -hmm. So they're not actually the same mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. And yes. even you could merge the districts without shutting down any school or closing any buildings. Yeah. So we have to keep that in mind. And I really agree with Andrew that this process is an opportunity not to answer a merger question, which is way beyond the scope, yeah. but to provide data and information, mm -hmm. concrete facts on the ground that yeah. would inform the conversation. What 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 is our what are our issues going to be with that building? Like, what's the long term? If you look at enrollment and needs, does the building work? Does it not work? Is an important data point. What is the overall population? And what would, if we did merge and want to close buildings, what would that cost? What would that look like? So yeah. hopefully, it can advance the conversation in a data-driven way, and we just <coughs> see where it goes. So not the district so team. gather the data of various scenarios mm -hmm. and yeah. let that help the community understand whether or not a merger is actually. Or a merger of buildings right. is actually something we There's want. a very simple scenario that people always say. Yeah. Oh, we close this middle school, put all the middle school kids in the high school, and put all the high school kids in the middle school. But it's actually a, that's actually a very complicated yeah. building question. Yes. And it's, a, it's not like something you could do for free. You'd have to do all kinds of construction. And it would come it subsequent money, to yeah. a merger anyway. Right. And, and, and I not, think we could, oh, sorry, but I think we can push that all aside and, and ask the question of, well, you know, how is this building serving our needs now and what is it costing us and you know what are the improvements that could be made to serve our needs if it's falling short in certain ways. 
Yeah, and then you know if the politics of the merger comes on top of it, which they will in some way, um, you know we'll have to deal with that the whole time. But I think getting that information down so we can make some intelligent choices based on data, as as Bridget was saying, is pretty important. But a real challenge for you guys. That's yeah, thank right, you. Thank right. You both. That's right. That's, I think we have to acknowledge it. I yeah. don't think we can ignore right. it. I don't think it's fair to the community to ignore it. And yet, I don't think that we, this is not the committee to answer all of the questions as to whether or not we should merge, because there are a lot of questions and there are a lot of considerations outside of just this building as to whether or not a merger is viable or whether it's preferable. The people are going to want to hear what Bridget said, which is <coughs> You have to be able to navigate that and say this is not precluding. This is not. Yeah. This is not biasing that yeah. process. This is not. We're not taking a position on that. Yeah. We're gathering data, and realistically, we have a, a few years before anything like that would occur, and we're not going to sit still and do nothing for a few years. And that's what the charge is. The charge of this committee is not to make a recommendation. It's to inform the process. Yes. Yeah, and and the shape of that building at a certain merger time. Yeah. Yeah, say we make some investments in that building and it, and it's a, you know, and, and some improvements. That could change how a merger looks in five years in terms of how we use buildings. Um, I, I would say in the merger discussion we had with Roxbury, Roxbury was ready to tell us how the building worked and what condition the building was in and all of those things. We could say what condition the building is in, but we haven't answered the questions educationally. And if you were in a merger process, somebody would want you to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that's what we're working on with that. So this question that, and that you rose originally about goals, mm -hmm. is that kind of an iterative process where the administration provides the initial, and then it comes back at some point and say, okay, here we collect all this data, we could really use clarification on that's exactly why the process is going to take a year because just just if we meet once a month which is probably pretty reasonable is the first meeting we'll sit down so <coughs> our first meeting in, in late October is going to be let's tour the building let's all get on the same page understand where we're going December we sit down and say okay what do we want this school to look like how do we want it to function what do we want to teach in here and how we wait a month to regurgitate that information back out to say, is this what we all understand? Yep, no, yep, let's tweak it again. You know, so you, it, it is, it takes a while. And, um, but that's exactly, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. And, and then we'll have sprinkled in there those public forums where we get an opportunity to, to share them. And that's we could coordinate. So with regard to the question of, of the goals, and Libby's point I, is, is very well taken for me. So I, all of us are representatives for the community. And Libby's making a very selfless point here where she has a lot of, her and her team have a lot of discretion over this process. And I actually think she's pushing us in the right direction, which is, you know, Libby's not always going to be here. Um, and we have an opportunity outside of this, but we do have an opportunity uh, to begin setting the goals, the ends for you know, our community. And I, I do think that's an important process that we shouldn't totally forget about. But I do think we it's outside the of the scope. Yeah, it's yes, yeah. the board. But I do think it's outside of the scope of the Main Street Middle School Building Committee. And so for this, it sounds like people are leaning in the direction of having Libby and Pam, Andrew, our administration kind of set the tone in terms of our educational goals for this process. Yeah, I would educational change it. Yeah, I would change so it. we can we can amend. We're going to be amending this anyways. Yeah, I would change it to educational needs. But I do think we need not tonight a discussion <laughs> about setting some ends or goals well, for the board. Another hour. Libby, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about yeah. that? Because obviously this this does put more of the onus on you with regard to the educational needs. But you and your team are doing great. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to hear it at the first public meeting again is sort of what the community thinks the needs are. It's just going to which we're going to we're going to incorporate. Going to keep that. on feeding yeah. the, all these opinions mm -hmm. in, and you're going to pick and choose what you think is consistent with the other kind of issues. Well, we're going to organize the information. Yeah, I mean it's. And that's why it'd be nice if it was a starting point. The school had 
either a list or some yeah. ideas about educational needs. So when you're starting with the community, you aren't oh, starting will. with just what are your ideas? Yeah. We will talk about how to facilitate and the process. We also yeah. talked about getting an actual professional facilitator for the process. And and from those needs, we're going to do some visioning as a committee before we meet with the public. It's an exciting conversation with the community. I think it's, it's going to it let people tangibly think about how they see education being done, you know, in a physical space. So I'm going to make a motion. Okay. I'm going to move to replace educational goals with educational needs. And I'm going to move. Can I? I can do both of these in the same motion. Right? And I'm going to move um, to produce a public-facing report by the end of 2020. Second. Yeah. All in favor? I think one of the things that we really want to do with this, I, I think it would be valuable, is we make this a living document, but it's not just something that just, mm -hmm. that we can so easily go in mm -hmm. and say, oh, okay, well, we want to bring these programs in. How do we easily incorporate that and see how it ripples through? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think we just, you know, Andrew gives regular, some regular updates to the board on how the process is going, that we need to amend the charge and, you know, rein it in or broaden it out or refocus it. The general question, Andrew, do you know of any other districts who have gone through this process and maybe any other committee members you guys could fall back on or rely on for? Uh, I would say every, first -hand every school, everybody does this. And the, the first thing you do is you build your program. And it, it's you sit down program by program and you talk about, okay, science it's science it's classrooms, it's how, what are we going to teach? Are we going to High school, you just look at the high school science lab sure. from 20 years ago to today, to what it's going to be 20 years from now. And they look totally different because the way people teach is different. How, how many kids do we want in the classroom? Um, what, are we, what are we lacking for in storage? You know, is that stuff you need to help support those classrooms? And you just write it down and you, you talk about where they want to be and you run the numbers and once you get that and we're all agreed, or at least fundamentally, of, of what it might look like on paper, and then you just start overlaying it on the building and see where those chunks start going outside your footprint. And then you start playing with, well, how can we, how can we get them to fit on our site? And the easy part is, you know, if we need X amount of square feet here, we can build a new building. Where could we possibly do that? And how much space do we need? And, um, and then you start looking at the relative costs and that's going to be the toughest thing because yeah. the, the last that's the last thing we want to talk about and ideally you don't even talk about costs it's inevitable you're going to but to be able to say to renovate is going to be x to build new is going to be x plus to do something in between is going to be there um, and then you can start talking about well, what, what is the value how much how much is it worth to us to achieve these goals and can we afford it then yeah, and I think costs, that's obviously part of the charge, and obviously affordability is a really important element of this for the community. At the same time, when we're in the process of visioning and we're in the process of exploring all of these options, I don't think that's the time to be constrained by costs. I think we put everything out there, and then we look at the costs. So the costs are going to come later in the process. So what Andrew said about value is really important. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to face that in initially from the community is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not building is good enough, right? And so that issue of of what are, is it worth all the cost to get that you know completely up to date building that we all would love to have, or as Louis said, you know, are we? And, and I don't mean to skew what you're saying, but like the decision about do we just buy a bunch of things? You know, like a building is a thing that we use to get our work done, and go sit under an apple tree instead. Right? I mean, there's it's, this is a it's a value laid and the costs are coming up fast, you know, I mean, it's going to be, maybe that's where it comes back to the board, right? Yeah, and, and, and we'll have to put some, we'll put a qualifier on it, that this is, our assumption is, is that this is a, a quality building that's going to last 100 okay. years, that's going to be made of quality materials, because it is, you can build a building for $150 a square foot, or you can build it for $400 a square foot, and one, and there's, 
pros and cons of each of those. Um, so we'll we'll definitely put those out there and, and have to make those those decisions and what it costs. Who knows? And and it'll be a snapshot in time to emphasize what mm -hmm. Andrew's saying because ten years from now, some of the tariffs that are in existence on materials that are being imported into this country might not exist. Labor costs might be different elsewhere in the world. Might be different. Yeah, here, you guys seem like you totally got it. I'm serious, like all of you. So it's great. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be fun, and it'll, it'll be it'll be interesting and informative, and nothing else. We're gonna be able to come up with some, hopefully, some. Every time you have these conversations, and you guys you guys deal with this every day, you answer the same ten questions every week, and to be able to have a document that says yes, we looked into that, and this is why we think this could work, couldn't work, or here here are the hurdles, and it's just down, it's done, it's not It's not going to be a matter of, well, we looked into that a couple of years ago, we'll, we'll look at it again and we'll get back to you. It can be, this is the work we did and this is this is what we believe is the scenario. So. Good. Um, ready to move on to... Any questions about this building? I know we kind of buzzed around. Feel free to, feel free to uh, email me if there's any questions. Libby sent out a poll to do a tour of the, the other buildings. I've also, have, I'm working and will have ready a draft of a building summary. And basically it's a narrative of all that we've done, or a narrative of the buildings and what we just did. Um, and again, we haven't, I have not gotten into costs or, um, or recommending projects or any of that, I think you guys need to get your head around what the whole district is and what, what everything's there because um, you need to, you know, you need to, there's a lot of stuff to be done and picking and choosing what's the right project. And I, at some point, hopefully, I'll, I'll know you guys and your direction well enough to be able to say, yeah, that's, I know that's where they want to head. But I think you guys need to see it all firsthand first to, uh, to help with that. Thanks. Good. You have the key to lock up? I do. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to. Uh, perfect. So, um, for a discussion, uh, community engagement in the budget process. Are you going to show us a video? Ow. Oh, Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I was going to. There's a lake right there for everybody to see. <laughs> Check it out. I'm sorry. We were going to do that. And I totally, totally so um, That's from the VSBA. It's on their website. And it's it was done actually by students in Vermont a couple of years ago. Some of you may have seen it before. But I think it's always good to watch right before budgeting season starts because it tries to put a very complex system into simple, simplified language which I've, I've watched it about 25 times and maybe 3% clear about what the whole process is. But uh, but anyway, that link is there for everybody. It hasn't changed much in the it, last couple of years? No, I'm not. No, no, no. no. Sorry, yeah. about, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, and, and this is the kind of annual part where we decide who we want to reach out to and who wants to go meet with, with whom. Um, Ryan had some ideas for Roxbury, right? Yeah. Or you just look I'm like sure you have a idea. couple I'm ideas. Sure really good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I can email about it. I didn't mean to put any words in your mouth there. Well, I don't I think we went out to the parents' groups of each of the schools and the senior center and Called a Kellogg Hubbard called a meeting or two. Um, Jana just asked me the other day, it was in her notes, to ask me in October, and she wondered if yeah. we want to schedule something in November. I actually have a suggestion from the senior center. If you're talking about communicate before you start the budget, <coughs> I just found it difficult last year to just go into the room with people and say, so. What do you think about the budget? It's mm -hmm. easier if you're proposing something. It they is. They can respond to it. So mm -hmm. I did think, well, okay, so that you did have a chance beforehand, I could schedule one or two times at the senior center that 
I'm sitting there and anybody could come and sit with me and just say, I'm here for half an hour if you wanted to come in and say anything that you had to say about it. That way you're not asking, setting up a room and expecting five million people to come and they don't come. Mm -hmm. Whereas what we should do, which we've done before, is schedule the senior center for a presentation when the budget's done, and often the city has done for this. I don't know, I mean, has presented their budget. And so the senior center is asking you when, if you'd like to use their facility, when would you like to? Yeah. No, I, I agree. I think there's some value, especially for places that point to the budget. Um, it, well, I guess for that timing also gets pretty tight, though, because that's a, yeah, I mean, you do the public forums, um, and then you don't, and the budget's kind of already cooked, uh, or at least partially cooked. Well, that, in that scenario, you're not asking for opinions. You're explaining what the budget is. Yeah. I mean, if you've done it already, you're just, it's a presentation of the budget so people understand what they're voting on. You're mm -hmm. no longer going to ask for opinions because you're not going to change it. But that, so that's why I was suggesting sort of, okay, I could be there Tuesday at 1 o'clock for half an hour or another day if you have anything you want to say. Prior to the budget, do stop by and see. Presentation that uh, in the past couple of years we've done at the high school is kind of like, how about if we did that at the senior center? Might we draw a more, you know, diverse crowd? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, some seniors, seniors might there. come that wouldn't come to the high school, but then again, would the people that went to the high school come to the senior center? I don't know. So only get a couple people to receive the informational presentation that you see. Yeah, we only yeah. get. Right. Could we get a hand to the Bridget, are you talking about right before town meeting day, that informational session? Or the, yeah, more, the, the earlier, earlier one. one. The, the one before we wrote the budget out. The, the I one. Think it had two people last year. Yeah. Well, so we also had the after school thing right before where there were like 100 people. And then they all left. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's what I yeah. So that's why I was suggesting don't do it until your your budget is done. The bigger the budget's done and you're just explaining to people and we may get only two, but. But kind of begs the question of how do people how do people gather and talk about things today? And I think that there is there are some groups that are consistent, but they're not necessarily and even all together they don't form a large percentage of the population. And do we need to be thinking about this from more of like a I support the word, but like a media strategy or a or a communication strategy that is not in a physical location. It's primarily, <laughs> it is, and it's and it you, uh, there you leave other people out, right? So it's not exclusive, but if we don't include that as a piece of it, and then the method you use for that is often different too. It's not let's all sit down and have a presentation. It's asking a provocative question or making a provocative statement that then solicits a reaction, and then you gather those reactions. And so there's a whole different way we communicate today that we have to incorporate as well as go to the senior center. Right. Well, for example, uh, Bridget was saying go to PTA meetings, and we've heard from the middle school PTA meeting that the only person there is she and two other people. So now mm -hmm. maybe they yeah, show was. up if there was an agenda item that they were interested in showing up to. But Put busing on the agenda. Then put budget in really it. small letters. <laughs> well, people there. If you had so, three slots, I'll oh, go ahead. Well, so we have, I mean, we have much more of a media presence Oh, we mm -hmm. could use those media platforms to encourage people to provide input about the budget process. Um, we could, I, we could yeah. ask people to just priorities or... The concern, of course, form. is that people will, you know, we, we then gather a lot of priorities. I'm that concerned that people won't understand more. that the, that the budget doesn't but drive the priorities. Say that again. I'm concerned that people don't understand that the budget comes from our three and five year plan. Oh, it right. doesn't come, it doesn't drive the three and five year plan. I think people may not understand that, that right. the public doesn't drive the budget. We are meeting the needs of our students in the community and creating a budget to meet those needs. That's why if we had a three year plan that wasn't the one submitted to the state but was clearer and shorter that people could understand, then they could refer to that. And we could 
but like we said something very important that the public doesn't drive the budget. And I think that that's a scary thing, right? The public doesn't know that. I mean, it, it does in the long run of influencing <laughs> us and influencing their, you know, the families influence the district, but, and, and everyone else does, but in the immediate, it's not like that. Uh, so what are the provocative part, slides so. we throw yes. out there and say, react to this? What are the things we're the actually public, wanting? The public, I, would, I just want to say, the public certainly drives components of the budget. For example, the reason why we incorporated busing into the budget last year was so because we, yeah. of public engagement and because yeah. we knew that there were needs and that we were able to help our certain elements of our community better. With regard to food service and providing for those folks, that was the result of a lot of community. But there's a lag. It there, takes time. There is it a takes lag. time, but I, and, I don't and know. And the I don't influence want to say is that. on the policy that we're going to provide right. better food for our students. Mm -hmm. Then we create a budget to provide better food to our students. Right. It's sure. a separate process. Yeah. No, I, sure. take, I take Becky's point that, no, we, that the way this is structured, that we, we go out to get input on the budget, makes it seem as if the budget is right. policy or right. something. Right. When yeah. in fact, what we should be asking for input on is. is so we're engaging it's an information wrong time of year. item to Which is something we've concluded before. Yeah. Right. We've concluded yeah. before yeah. that we should engage yeah. the community in the spring. But yes. on a different topic. But in a way that would drives the conversation. I mean, does it really does it really work that way though? I mean, because we've had kind of a pretty broad like take transportation. We've had like a transportation policy that arguably could have supported busing, but it really takes the same thing. So it wasn't a budget issue. But it, we was, need, it, they didn't, it wasn't something that came up like right during the budget. It was yeah. a like it's true, it was presented the budget. Oh, let's throw that in. It was, you know, it was, it was a longer term conversation that we were responding yeah. to, and then it yeah. was implemented in the budget. And I never Which remember any of our job. those meetings for the budget last year that somebody actually talked about busing. They came to the board meeting. Ahead yeah. of the budget. Ahead of the budget. Right. And, and yeah. to the extent that it reacts, yeah. it reacts with a lag, because it needs to react with a lag. So it reacts, but it takes a full year before it makes it. So we have to change the policy. Yeah, we have to change. And then the budget reacts to the policy. Yeah. I think there are places that, I mean, Steve, you're making me think with the provocative question I get. There are, there are very limited places in the budget, first of all, that we have a lot of play with, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The vast majority is salary and benefits to our employees. And so thinking about the small areas where we do have a lot of play, and you all do need to make a decision around, like, um, I'll give you an example that's on my mind for this year's budget is the enrichment piece with the after school that we've talked about. Do we pay for it all? Do we not pay for it? Do we have people pay for some? Do we not have people pay? You know, like um, the policy discussion around the fundraising, it's yeah. the same piece. So I just wonder, if, like, those would be provocative questions. Should the district pay for all after-school enrichment activities offered through the district, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so th so then, like, you could get some feedback on that. I can we react fast enough to that? It depends if we can get it, like, if we can get the social media reach. If it's a good enough question that people have opinions on. Um, no, but can you react in the budget to it? Oh, at this point in time, like, right now, we could. Right, but you know? in a month or two? Is it doable? I don't know. I mean, yeah, those are the things that are that are massageable in the budget, right? They're, they're not okay. the biggest. Yeah, they're not saying. huge pieces. They're not huge components in our budget. They're the ones that people say to me, "Well, it's just a drop in the dot." When you're talking about an eighteen million dollar budget, when really, you know, like if I got that, you know, if I started adding up all those drops in the budget, <laughs> it adds up. But there are certain areas in the budget that that really do influence community and opportunities for kids. And um, and we've had questions. You've had discussions about them here, um, about what to do um, that aren't salary and benefits. But Maybe people, we should list those questions. Yeah, no, that's right. Maybe we should list those questions mm -hmm. and try the same venues we've tried before, but like go to the PTA meeting saying we're talking about budget and we're interested in your answers to these questions. These are or the things that might be affected this yeah. year in this right. budget. Yeah, or on social media, or yeah. you know, yeah. anywhere. Like the, yeah. yeah. District then the the same Super kind of questions Twitter. over and over. There you go. Yeah. If you yeah. bring those two or yeah. three questions out repeatedly, everyone starts to learn the question. And then you can start to to narrow in the question. So let's let's stick with the enrichment opportunity, right? Like if we get an overwhelming response of like yes, the district should put that money in the budget. And then you can come back with, okay, so let's weigh the pros and cons to this. Also you know, like so the pro would be that it's 
it's free and equitable and everybody could, you know, and we can, we can provide that and we can provide awesome opportunities. A con would be that it limits the amount of opportunities that we can provide because we only have so much money, right? So, so knowing those two pros and cons, now what, what is your, you know, now give us some feedback on that. It, it just, it could gear a conversation better. There, it is a very practical thing. There is a political reaction, which is you're asking me to weigh in on the things. And what I really want to talk about is the fact that our schools are poor or, you know, whatever that thing, that bias that's already out there all the time is. And we cannot react to that on a moment's notice. We may be able to react to that over two or three years if we wanted to, but it is, you know, the question of like, we have too many teachers or whatever that they are, they're overpaid, you know, they get their health care too good. whatever those things are, you know, the things that we really can't do a lot about but that are coming up. We do want to hear those. We don't want to disrespect that opinion in the community while we recognize that we can't react to it very quickly. Yeah, and it's, a, it's also, a, sorry, it's also a chance to educate in terms of that's a negotiated piece. Yeah. That's a different item or that's a different conversation. So we need a forum. All I'm saying is we need a forum for people to be able to voice that, that macro budget thing while we understand that we're actually working on a micro budget. And I was going to say the, the real big question is how do you get some input? And I think what we've just discussed is the only time we get a huge amount of input is when somebody's upset. <laughs> and then they all come in big numbers. And that's fine, but unless we're going to elicit a question that's going to make everybody upset and they're going to turn out, then probably large numbers of people are. This is not to elicit a question that makes people upset. I was going to say, you could probably come up with three questions that upset people, and that would get everyone to pay attention. I mean, we do want people to react to a question about the budget right now. We, we want them to engage. We're doing a budget. Pay attention. And what about doing a Facebook this? survey or using social media, doing a Google some kind of virtual event, um, survey monkey? I mean, any of those channels would you mm -hmm. to yeah. get to just to get to gather data and say, okay, eighty-seven percent of you said you know, this is what you want. And then go from there. I think I'd want to. I'd want to target it with very, with specific buckets. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's that I would rely on you all to, to help craft what those right. buckets might be. I was going to say I want to be careful because I think a lot of us are living. And this is supposed so to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, but this is supposed, it's supposed to be the board. board. Right. <laughs> I know we're not a policy governance board per se, but in the governance model, this is the piece that's really supposed to be the board as the community representatives. Right. Well, we've been talking about Perfect. raising this, you know, reactionary question. Like, really, I think a lot of our job in this conversation is paying attention to the grumblings, paying attention to the praises throughout the year, last month, next month, and being able to synthesize that roughly into what the budget would be next year. It's also important for people to understand that last year our budget went up less than the rate of inflation, and that, with regard to like the grumblings and brought up, which are some of the more popular ones that. I hear in terms of grumbling. Um, and so when people understand, like, well, how are we comparing to prices at large in, in society in recent years, this, uh, this, this district's been, been pretty good on a lot of Well, that's a slide with, with, well, that's a slide with three year. facts, yeah. right? Like how we're doing budget-wise, how we're doing on, on demographics, and how we're doing relative to you know, other schools, you know, whatever we yeah. want to say about those things. But that slide about where we, how we did, how is it going lately? Mm -hmm. That slide. And actually, maybe that's a better question. How is it going? How how do you feel about the schools and mm. what are they doing? For, you know, how's it working for your? Because if it's working well, generally, yeah. Like that. It's not provocative. Open, yeah. open I like the specific. I, I'd actually yeah. really love to get into it on this. It's a really hard, hard question. It's yeah. a really hard yeah. question. And then that, all, the other well, piece we is both here, too. Yeah. So, so, oh, yeah, you no. Know, but, it, it, you know, in terms of, like, big priorities and then a couple specific questions. The other piece of this is when you solicit information and you expect to use it, what's your gathering technique? Or what's your record, record technique? And I think that's a... If this is simply an extension of our day-to-day -day role as a board member, which it sort of is, which is we are listeners and we are representatives, then it can be done informally. The 
does not have to be written down somewhere, but you know, it ultimately comes back to us as representatives to cast votes. Are you representatives or are you trustees? Well, in that case, we have no reason to listen. We're not representatives. Well, we're elected by the community, so it's a representative democracy. Yeah. Yeah. So even but though this is our responsibility, responsible. right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> even though this is our responsibility, Libby just mentioned to maybe the next board meeting is that too late to for her to come back with her to how she proceed, and we could add anything to it, so we could all have the same set of questions. However, we decide whether it's online or somewhere else to ask. Does that make sense? Having given some thought to it, or did you expect us to come up with this right now? Uh, I don't think we have to come up with it right now. I do know that it's um, October second or so. My phone tells me, and uh, <laughs> my mom's birthday. Okay, she's watching. I'm we'll watch sure, sure she watches all of the board meetings um, on fall. Uh, um, yeah, if I, we we could probably figure out some specific ways the next section. But after that, we're into November. And if we actually want to get some answers to questions like this, then November gets pretty late. Well, we might decide now how we get it and where we get it, we could work on that. So at the next board meeting, I could say, okay, I've talked to Libby, and we're going to go to the senior center this day and this day, and the P next PTA meeting, or this is the way to do it online, and we've set that up. So it would be, that would be all set up, ready to go. Yeah, we just I haven't decided what the question is. I, I think it's an online mix of things, because, you know, um, yeah, I mean, the only two places that I've ever been on a meeting like this where there's been significant numbers, especially since the parents groups seem to be not terribly people this year, unfortunately. Um, but then there's been a couple bombs meetings that were well attended, and the senior center has been decently attended a few times. I skipped it last year, but the Rotary can actually have a good number of people. Like, really? Like, yeah, it can have like 20 people or so. Wow. And they're all, like, you know, the people who are watching the is always willing to have us come. So I'm happy to be that guy this year. Okay. You need backup. I mean, I'm happy to go speak to some of the parents. I mean, the union one is usually a large group. The union parents are usually. I'm done that a couple times in their world. Only four. Is there an agenda? In other words, even when else? I was a parent, I look at it and say, mm -hmm. what are we doing this time? Oh, it's a speaker that's coming to well, It's against the provocative like question then. It's like, give me a, give me something I'm going to talk about. Right, and then I'll show like, I could have a house meeting with, you know, 30 people if I had a provocative question. Or bring pizza. Right, or bring food. Yeah. Or food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. so we we always offer pizza. pizza. No. <laughs> no, it's alcohol. So maybe we should go back to Ryan, though, and say, so what about Roxbury? Well, I think maybe before we even go on Roxbury specifically, like thinking about this conversation, the thing that jumps out at me is we're trying to get information from specific groups. In the end, what are we going to do with that information? Are we all going to tabulate our numbers? Rotary said five yes, ten no. Seniors said 20 this, 15 no. And then we're going to sit down and say, these are the numbers are, this is the direction we should go. Um, because if we are going to go that route, we need to do a much better job of getting a representative survey yeah. of the community and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, but I don't think that's... Are we taking the temperature of people we don't normally take the temperature of? Is that the goal here? Take the temperature of people we don't normally hear from. And also, by having conversations, I mean, it informs our thinking, that's true. right? Mm -hmm. right yeah. we, we hear from people we don't necessarily normally talk to. We hear things we don't necessarily normally hear. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're trying to get like a survey data because that would be that's a different thing entirely. Absolutely. We're just trying to expand this expand our reach out. We're just us out. actively trying to have, and it's yeah. part of our messaging out mm -hmm. about the, you know where we're headed as a district. Yeah. That's kind of a secondary piece, but it 
it builds a long-term kind of understanding about what the schools are doing. So it's as much about the process as it is. Yeah. The process exactly. is important. The process is important. Sure sometimes, well. That's what we're saying. Sometimes it's important that you have the meeting and you have the pizza, even if only five people come. Because yeah. yeah. you had the meeting and people could come, come if they wanted to, and you provided them. Yeah, yeah and some of the other discussions you don't have to put I see it as a strictly political process. I mean, we will we will get information we didn't get, but we really have a we, to to keep the school support healthy, which we have a very supportive community. We reach out to people who um, who want to be asked, yeah. who who need to be part of that. And I think Rotary is a great example of that, right? That's not a big enough group to make a bullet, but they are people who really care about their community and. They talk to other people, and so go out and show respect to a group of people who have, for a very, very long time, have been paying their taxes in the community, and just show them respect. And it's a political, it's a political thing. It's that's a good political, thing, not a conniving. And the same with seniors. Yeah, exactly the same. And so I'm, again, I'm happy to do some so, current outreach. Um, Sounds like Tina has senior center, Steve yeah. will do Rotary, um, and then uh, we should I think, think about some. Is there questions? Yeah. Maybe like four or five, like two general, two mm -hmm. specific. Keep it narrow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, on things that really resonate. We can talk about that, I think, next board meeting. And we can get it yeah. out rather quickly. And then I'm working with my leadership team tomorrow morning on. Um, Kind of big picture, pie in the sky ideas. So that we might be able to pull some themes from that as well from our end. But that's in the context of maybe budget implications. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh great. It is okay. in the context of budget. Oh, <laughs> I mean, rather than up. longer term. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's great. And and then we might do something electronically and see how it goes. So well, once we get those, yeah. once we get that questions. definition, it shouldn't be too hard to repeat it. Um, multiple channels. I do think though that, so I think that there's value to the process, there's value to com community engagement, which is really the political <laughs> element of talking about. That was amazing. Um, <laughs> I was kind of but watching it, with, <laughs> with regard to these, these questions, with regard to the community's priorities, it really shouldn't be a reactive thing and it really should be incorporated into into our goals. That's my, I know I've said it in your, in this time tonight. So goals. Yeah. yeah, I think we have to have a, a, a community process, and then we can say, you know, we went through this process, we engaged the community in this way. This is this, these are the goals of the community, and this is reflected in our budget here, here, and here. Right now, we can't really do that. And even doing this, this is good, but it is very reactionary. It's not really giving the community a chance. To yeah, no, it's, it's and this is a process we go through every year, and, and it's, it can't be a substitute for other more inclusive ways to. to it's a tough to take before we do the budget. I mean, I just, but to respond to Andrew a minute, I think that this administration has some clearly articulated goals. Right. And <laughs> so, I mean, in terms of those questions, we can. When we're asked about the budget, we can. We have a direction, and when we're talking about the budget, we can. We're going somewhere. Say, this is, you know, this is how we're working on equity, and being implemented and there are very specific things that we're doing and there are budget proposals that tie to that. So although it's true that we haven't undertaken this kind of large community process that we need to facilitate in, that it's not as though we're directing. That's yeah. a really big pro I mean the yeah, oh, it's a I big project. is that it's a really big process. And I think we felt, you know, with the merger and the new administration that we just oh, totally. couldn't take it on, right? I mean we just couldn't put them through it before they even do you think we're coming to that time now? Yeah, I was going to say, and when would that time? I don't know. I, I mean, and I think it's a big question for Lydia and her team, too, if they feel like mm -hmm. they're, they have, they could make the time for it. Do we feel like we can make the time for it? And what, are, what do we yeah. feel like it would add to what's going Could on it be that these questions, mm -hmm. these pointed questions, sort of are little almost trial balloons where you incorporate some of those things you're working on? into practical real world questions. Um, and I think like the like this like the uh, enrichment is sort of a 
a way to do that, honestly. Or many of the practical things we work on, they're going through this lens, these lenses that you've created for how you analyze this, or how you do decision making. And honestly, that's what the board gets put before the board on is your priorities in practical, concrete, immediate questions. So, I, I feel like with some of the after school stuff, for example, I'm not certain that this would have all been flushed out, so I don't want to propose this as a panacea, but some of those priorities that we gathered from the community throughout that process, um, you know, Libby might have not been quite as blindsided as a new administrator had we done a visioning process in advance. Now, I understand a new district, all this wasn't going to be feasible, there was a lot of change, I'm not pointing fingers, I'm not saying anything was, I, you know, circumstances were such that that's the way things played out and things are going really well now. But to Libby's point before about Libby's not always going to be here, mm -hmm. I, think, I think we can engage the community and we can show some leadership in a way that can set our administration up for success for a longer range across administrators. So that's my thought. I'm very for it. I think we need to make time for it. That's my perspective. Yeah. I, and you've heard me say this before, but I think. Do we need if, a five year plan? Uh, yeah. Well, if you had a three year plan, that you um, w it would, you'd have what you want next. So maybe it's not in this budget, but it's coming to the next one. Look, it's written here. So we discussed it, we decided this is what was coming next. So. Uh, somebody dies and leaves us five million dollars. We have ex to know exactly what we wanted to do next. And if Libby wins the lottery and isn't here, the new superintendent who comes in, we say, by the way, this is our plan. So this is what we were intending to do next because it's you're hoping it's based on what the community and the board have wanted to. When we have four hundred thousand dollars at the end of the year in a fund balance, rather than oh well, maybe we can put it towards this parking lot. We haven't really yeah. considered other things. There's there's a community the vision for <coughs> how to spend. The ends are. Yeah, they're going to answer this question. No, no. The answer is you need a three-year plan. Yeah. 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 And even like the three-year plan might not answer this discussion because. Superintendent, you might want to say, like, I don't want to be necessarily shackled by what the previous superintendent wanted to do. It might not, but it's a start. So yes. yeah. In terms of these, yeah. the immediate, I mean, I realize this okay. is a bigger yeah. conversation, yeah. but we're really trying to figure out, like, what's the next step on, on community engagement? And it sounds like you're going to do yeah. a draft of a question or five. So we'll bring questions back to the next board meeting so y'all can think about it, and then I'll craft some with the admin team as well. Um, for you to react to or wordsmith. Um, and then I heard Tina and I go into the uh, senior, center. senior center to do some, some stuff for the seniors. I heard the rotary, yep. um, but I'm more than happy to go with you as well. You like you that? Enjoy. My grandfather was a lifelong Rotarian. <laughs> Smiles down at me every time I go. Um, and I heard Jim talking about parent group. Yeah. <coughs> And then we use these questions sort on of media. That's fine too. I wonder if Ryan wants to hold something at the Rockstar Library, maybe. Mm -hmm. PTOs will be meeting regularly. There's a community potluck this coming Friday. Seniors have lunch every Monday, so there's there's some avenues to. Okay, more than to happy to, to join in. Do you, Do you ever go back with the question mm -hmm. to Roxbury? How the merger go? Do we ever do that to the community? No, we didn't. Lisa and I had talked about. It would have been at the end of the first year, like kind of reaching out to some of the families, yeah. um, some of the you know, more involved folks, and it just got busy. But and now it might now be more valuable didn't. because to say, it's been a couple of years, how are we feeling? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the most provocative question maybe in Roxbury. I don't know. Is, I mean, it may not engage the whole community, but I don't know. I don't, you know, you don't want to look back too much, but there are some, we went through some big things as a district. How did we do? And yeah. And administrative could, turnover is another one of those things that was huge and engaged the community. So it's something we could interpret the fact that you know, I know how I many know. angry people do we have here tonight complaining about things, or how many people do we have jumping up and down that everything is fantastic. 
you know, we seem to be doing all right. right. All right. Uh, okay. Also, I feel, I think sometimes um, it's like I'm thinking of uh, an online survey or just asking the question. It's a good opportunity to collect success stories, small individual success stories that you don't hear about. Like I would hear about one through a completely different channel just in conversation with somebody before I joined the school board. Oh, you know, I, you know, this happened to my child in the school and it was, you know, it was a really positive thing for me. And I think it would be great to hear about some of those and be able to share those. So then you might be able to get themes too that exactly. can influence, like protect this piece. <laughs> right. So um, good discussion. Um, let's move on to the last item on our agenda. We're already past a German time. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll say hi to her. My mom. Her mom. <laughs> so, yeah. you want, I could talk about this piece a little bit. So the policy committee two weeks ago had expected to have before the board tonight a draft policy for gender non-compliant students. That's not the case. Um, about a day and a half, two days before our second to last policy committee meeting, I found out that the VSBA essentially withdrew the model policy that they had for this topic. Um, that policy was the foundation for the draft that we were going to bring before you tonight. So, <laughs> a little bit of a wrench in the plan there. Um, again, if you guys remember the background for where we had started mm -hmm. early summer, um, some of the principals come and said, you know, we have some good procedures in place, but it's a lot of fuzziness with all of these topics. We'd like to have a little bit more backing from the board. Essentially, we'd like to have something of policy to really affirm what we're doing. Um, so we took the lead on it. I had some meetings with Mara Iverson from Outright Vermont. Um, Libby had sent me some of the procedures that the superintendents get from AOE. Again, the SBA model policy was the foundation. Um, we had a pretty good path going forward. And then, surprise, yeah, the, when I spoke with the SBA about their decision, the federal judges across the country have been making rulings that are inconsistent. Um, the primary legal reference for their policy was a dear was the dear colleagues letter. Um, from the end of the Obama administration, which had been rescinded um, with our new administration. So that big foundation was kind of pulled out, and there's just a lot of unknowns right now on this topic. So we don't have anything before you tonight, but I think we had a question for maybe what you guys would like us to do. We could, one, continue on with the draft we have, knowing that the legal references aren't maybe the best that they are, or they're going to be changing, something we have to pay attention to. Or we could just hold off and wait and see how things play out, not have anything on the books at all. Or probably the third option might be we could come up with not necessarily a, a vision type policy, but just something very basic that this is the direction we would like our administration to go on this topic. Not prescribe anything, you know, very general, support our students, don't break the law. Do the best you can. I can abide yeah. by those three things. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, more elegant than that. But um, and so that is the only other update that I have on the topic. It sounds like in the best world scenario, Bisbet attorneys are working on the recommendation for VSBA, and they think maybe the end of November they might have an updated policy for us to work on again. But again, that's totally up in the air. Can I ask you what Mara had to say because she helped VSBA write the first. She did. Um, if I were to summarize our conversation, a lot of her critiques would be this is the best we have right now. Yeah. The old there, one that they went through. Yes. Um, there wasn't anything glaringly wrong, or there wasn't any single thing that she said, take this out, you have to put this in. There wasn't any really significant concrete change. Um, she and I spent time talking through it, helped me get informed on some of the topics and the challenges, but it was. She probably said that several times in our conversation. This is the best we have. Um, and, uh, we did, when we found out about the VSBA's withdrawal, I did reach out to Libby to ask the principals again, kind of for their feedback on this, just like we're asking you right now. Um, what would you guys like? Would you like us to go ahead with what we've been doing? Are you happy with what you have, procedures? Um, 
but we didn't hear anything yeah, back from them. Yeah, I didn't hear much back from them. I think my question would be, would this board's opinion change? But I know my principal's opinion would not change based on where we are, but um, would this board's opinion change about how we work with, um, with this topic if federal law changed? Which I don't think you would personally. Well, I mean, the other thing is that values have a change. Right. Values have a change. I mean, if the, yeah. the federal law yeah. imposes something else, something else that we have to that we have a responsibility to respond but to. That could be a caveat yeah, in, the, in the policy. Can be, yeah. you know, but we shall review the policy. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. This I mean, honestly, we want to like that, though, be a counterpoint to, to well, we don't have to what's going on. Mm -hmm. that, that, so so well, one of the things is yeah, respond yeah, to what Andrew said. Apparently, one of the things the that, only. that um, there's some working on the, the Trump administration may promulgate a rule that defines gender as biological sex, like which could then reverberate through all kinds, all of, kinds of stuff. I don't know. Well, well, suppose so. you brought to us the policy <laughs> that you've written. And we look at that and make a decision on having seen that. Does that make any sense? Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Suppose you brought the policy that you had written to us to see as a board, do we think that's a good policy, no matter what the rest of the world is doing? And then again, decide should we put this in place and we would change it if something happened that it was suddenly illegal? Not all policies have law in it. Yeah. Well, this one is very, I mean, I, I kind of understand why the BSBA felt like they had to pull it because they heavily cited it, and it's heavily cited mm -hmm. to authority that no, the, the legal authority isn't really there anymore. And, and you're right, but it does not have to be so heavily so, cited. Right. It does not, so not have, have to do right. 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 We took the right. citing down. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What, right. what, what do you guys suggest? I mean, you guys have been... I don't think the BSBA draft and the draft that we had coming before you guys was very prescriptive necessarily, um, but it was it was more detailed than some of our other policies. Um, I think I would lean a little bit more towards the more values-based directive approach, which would be kind of pulling out the definitions, pulling out a lot of the legal references, and going forward with that direction that yes we're going to support our students do our best to reduce potential for conflict and we have to have a little more I mean obviously it would have to have more meaning at that but right. that's that's where it kind of is what supports decision making in the schools that give you enough when you're making a decision to look at the policy and go well in this case this is the filter we use to make that decision Without the legal, con I mean that yeah. is going to still bind us. But you know, you need I mean, there needs to be more in there in terms of uh, kind of. It needs to be a little bit of teeth specific. to tell us where yeah. that our direction we're currently taking is the direction that this board supports. Right? And maybe there's where right. we need to find the questions that are that need clarity because we could go forever on values about equity and you know and privacy and. Anything else we want to talk about, but it doesn't maybe guide you. Well, uh, it's this. I mean, you know, if it said enough around respecting students' gender identity or respecting privacy, um, doing so to the greatest extent possible while complying with, with other legal requirements, I mean, is is that level of detail uh, close to enough? But, the, this, the VSBA policy had some more specifics about record keeping, for example, and yeah. has to maintain the two sets of records. Like, does that have to be in the policy? Well, it's, it's more procedural. So I was wondering, too, are we going to set up a guideline for administrative procedure <laughs> to deal with? Because I, I think some of the problems the principals were ha are, are having are very specific ones. Uh, you know, you have a situation have where to do with records. <laughs> <they> have to <laughs> do with <laughs> records and where records go yeah. and who, who you know, where things get mailed and under That's what name they get mailed. The case and law is causing problems because mm -hmm. whatever position we take is challengeable and it, we don't know how to be settled out. So if you're looking for the board to take that responsibility, fair enough, to say the board's willing to take the risk, do it this way, that's great. Then the administration says, you know, I don't know what the law says, but the board says to do it, so I got to do it. And 
or the, I don't or think the, they can do that right now is the problem. So or the administration can tweak the procedure within you know, the broader values of the policy. And if there's you know, law that comes down that you know, binds or instructs. And in terms of that, we have a pretty, we, we have a tight policy review schedule that's about to start because the policies are going to be started to be reviewed very soon, right? And there's nothing that stops the board from saying we need to pull, put this policy on the agenda next and review it because the law has changed, right? There's nothing that tells us we can't do that. We certainly have a lot of lawyers on this board. <laughs> I would think, and, well, I would, yeah, just two. I would think that it would be better to have something for the administration yeah. to refer to than nothing. It really yeah. leaves you out in no man's land if there's nothing there to refer to. Yeah. It allows the schools to make the statement rather than the district to make a statement of support, yeah. which is not a, that's not a good place to be. It should be the district making a statement. Or All not. Right. So why don't we try to make a statement? Yeah. 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 Do it around values and, um, you know, if we get a crazy rule from the feds, we'll let that play yeah. that day. Yeah. Do we cross-reference policies from time to time in our policies? Like, try not to. Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering what the general, because of, with the equity policy, I wonder if that. There's definitely pieces some there. pieces yeah. that, yeah. Like if there was things when, and this gender policy, I was like, well, we set this much better in <laughs> the like policy. In, in law, I don't want to cross reference yeah. each other. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I think the. I, the, I wasn't certain how. Yeah. Well, I think the idea of the policy is. Keep it clean. Yeah. Keep it clean. And, yeah. Yeah. They can stand alone. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. But if, is the policy going to specifically reference values related to record keeping? I think what we might be able to, I think what we might be able to do. Is that interpersonal conflict is a big one. Like that's where the records become such a hot topic is because we're trying to support our students. The, the, the students themselves in the building, it's easy. But it's when you start talking to the parents outside or the public outside, like that's when it gets a little bit more hairy and it's a chance for conflict. Um, it's maybe having a value statement for reduce, doing the best to minimize the conflict and doing the best to, I, again, we haven't. We sat down and flesh that out. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, if it were broad enough, and then there was a procedure so that each school knew yeah. how they notified and who they notified, kind of thing. That and still. And what name they used to notify? That still needs to be built internally yeah. after you see a policy right. statement yeah. effectively. Mm -hmm. So, Bridget Ryan, Steve, you feel you have enough mm -hmm. guidance to? Go more values based. Yeah. 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 But I can't say there was a question from me from to ask if we had a policy around this from UBS this year, this year already. Going down the grades. It might be good for us on the side to understand what that question was, just so we can put a point on the policy a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. We can do that. Sorry. I think you all talked to the principals about this. Okay. Mm -hmm. In a more private executive yeah, session yeah. kind of way, might be important. Okay. He wants to go directly to them for the conversation. So I think we can set it up. Yeah. yeah. Just because I don't want to speak for them because I'm not in the direct immediate the decision. Right. Thing, you know. Mm -hmm. That might be really good. Yeah. Especially since they're the ones who catalyze this, their mm -hmm. requests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to update today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed?